This is log number 10, uh, the last log of 2023. I have been doing consistently 10 logs so far, which it's equivalent to 10 weeks of uh, working on the theme. This theme has been um, a brand new adventure for me. And given that it's going to be the last log of this year and moving on to the next year pretty soon ish and most probably by the time you hear this is going to be 2024 I wanted this log to include alongside the progress of this week to include um, an origin story of how this sort of theme came to be I know I have touched upon it before but I don't think I have touched on it as much as I'm, I wish to today so I'm going to quickly get out of the way the progress that I've made so far this week. Um, this week I've uh, been doing mainly the measurements as I re redone some of the core components of the composition. Um, I have added uh, a lot more figures. So I've finished those. Uh, I, it's pretty much going really smoothly. Um, I would say 70% is done. And I have only some parts of the background to measure. Uh, they're not drastic or anything difficult. So I think by next week, well, this week that is coming and next week is going to be finalized. So that's very cool. I'm really happy with the result and how it sort of appears and, and, and enhances the... Um, this part of the stature, given that there are six statues, this is the second one. Uh, I've added some unique elements, which I'm excited to see how everyone reacts to them. Other than that, that's pretty much what I was doing this week. Just remeasuring and redrawing things. So yeah, that went really well. Um, now, moving forward to the origin story. Um, I think... It's appropriate for me to sort of get you guys back to where it all started, how my mind was sort of working. And to do that, I need to sort of take you guys to my traveling months when I was, um, I was in uh, the Netherlands and I was sort of not really doing a lot of art as in coming from flow painting, I decided to take a break. And through that, as I was traveling, I started writing and expressing myself through words and sentences, which I found very articulate for me. I I, I bonded with my, my writing self quite er early and I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. As I was doing it, drawings started coming alongside it. Uh, with my words came some designs. It was it was new things for me. I've, I've never done that before. So... As I was doing it, I decided, as I said in the introductory log, to do sort of the traveling artwork every month, the place that I'm gonna be in, sort of design some 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 concepts, some some drawings, and and reflect how I see the uh, the the town or the city around me, which was fascinating. And every month that I was doing it. Uh, I was adding new things, but it got to a point that I I needed something different. As I, I, I'm the type of person who I don't really like doing the same thing twice. So when I saw that there wasn't a lot of um, sort of improvements, I, I decided to sort of switch to poetry. I always was doing poetry in my life, but never really sharing it. So I decided to sort of put forward some of my poetry pieces that I was writing on the go as I was I was traveling and how what I was feeling and my reflections in the past and whatnot, given that I had a lot of time on my hands in terms of I wasn't working actively on something or pursuing something, I was observing the world and reflecting on myself. So I wrote a few pieces, um, some funnier, some a lot more personalized and some that were extremely personalized. And as I was creating that and sort of the idea of, of, of their web pages and how they came across, I decided to sort of have, um, have a new story that has an illustration and a, and a narration that sort of adds to the illustration and that were going to be sort of the stonemason that was sort of cultivating. 
And through that, it was sort of an idea up in the air. I wasn't focused on anything other than just I want to create a, a couple of compositions and have a, and have paragraphs that really add to the composition. And you can you can read and see uh, my understanding of it, and therefore you can sort of understand how this particular character is sort of behaving and whatnot. That was the sort of like the next step of the poetry. As I was traveling and moving around, um, I was thinking about it. I was thinking how this person and who this person will be. And funnily enough, um, around the mid part of my traveling sort of months, sort of like two months in, uh, I decided to sort of cross the border and go to Germany. What I found interesting in that was that before... Uh, exiting the southern border of uh, Netherlands and going to Germany, there was an American cemetery, which shouldn't have been surprising to me, but I I felt very sort of um, intrigued by it, intrigued to understand sort of the impact that it had and, and the visual sort of connotation that it came before. The, the no surprise part is that the Allies came to help and liberate Nether Netherlands and some parts of Germany in in World World Two, and um, I found that I found that I haven't been looking at that side of of uh, Central Europe before uh, before that day. So during that travel, sort of, of and switch of countries, I began seeing and sort of reflecting the world around me through the eyes of what came after the World War II. The more I were observed, I would understand how much everyone was affected. And in truth, the um, the shame that it brought, especially to, to Germany, and how they were um, stigmatized with it. And during that time, and my conversations with some of the locals and in general, my my sort of lenses that had this concept of war, I started reflecting to our days how we're still currently, some countries are currently at war, and the effect of the aftermath. So without knowing, I, I sort of embedded that with my, my, my story that I wanted to introduce. I wanted to see the effects of war that I had on the on the population and how it affected not only the people that were involved but the people who were mourning the 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 casualties of it and how they're dealing um on their on their days to come it's interesting because i was raised in um in a country that was divided and the hostility that it came from choosing sites and sort of inheriting hating someone that caused turmoil and always pointing fingers allowed me to sort of understand how it's not just the people who are involved that are damaged and and sort of created in um in a very peculiar and and unorthodox way of a human to to really have an experience of taking someone else's life or fighting uh, for any personal reason. And through that, I, I wanted to develop the story that I had in mind, where the stonemason would be a person who has endured and participated in a war, and how that affected his life after that ended, given that he did atrocities that he he didn't want to commit, but he did so as of a survival instinct and how that is carrying through his life. Now the setting and what sort of war that as he participate and whatnot, I don't want to spoil it to you as it's something that is written in history and it could be deciphered through the story. But as I was thinking along those contexts, I'm after uh, a week or no, 
towards the end of that month, I wanted to go back to the UK where my sort of young childhood took place and I wanted to make amends with some of the issues that were raised as I was as I was growing up there. Sort of to make amends. And as I was going there, I started seeing the um, the change that I had in my mental state, how things have changed. I have changed. I grew. I understood things better. And to make it short and really get into that, um, there was um there was a town near my my hometown. That there was a tower on a hill. Um, it looked abandoned from afar, and I was sort of questioning what's over there. So one day, uh, decided to sort of visit it and see for myself what's what's um what's going on up there. As I went there, it was indeed in fact abandoned, but it was a, a tower that overlooked the whole the whole city that I was raised in, and it was calm and the greenery was beautiful and the tower was very it was sort of dilapidated but at the same time it it stood tall and it was made i think in the 19th century as it was written on the plague plaque that's what you call the thing uh, on it and therefore I, I i knew the setting that i wanted this character that i made to to be sort of placed in a tower after whatever he has done or whatever he has endured he would have been faced with his loneliness and his emotions on how to perceive his life and along through that along the the path of reflecting and and feeling guilt and feeling helpless and all that which very much i partake in willingly of course and from for my own demise i wanted to reflect this idea of of the concept of what would someone have done and and through the understanding of the past in the places that i've been the effect of how war caused and is still lingering in people's minds and wherever you look and especially in central europe places that feel like they they just you know time stopped for them the main concept of this story uh, besides the overarching theme is that if you were to imagine this person who has partaken in a war and had to leave his country and move to the to the country that um, that uh, he was supporting, or there, or his country was supporting and sending soldiers, his life in in his own country sort of was placed on hold, and everyone who he cared for is like miles away, separated by seas, and what if towards the end of it? whatever he had before no longer is there and given that he miraculously survived what does he do now uh, and so I, I decided to create sort of this person who is unable to move forward from his past surrounded by his past being a stonemason creating statues and having sort of lots of years of and decades of art that embellishes and occupied at his time and now towards the end of his life we are sort of welcomed into his space obviously in a metaphorical sense and see the aftermath and see his mentality and what he was facing all these years and it's something topical for me because as much as i didn't want to put all myself into the character and i didn't want to make the character me as i haven't experienced what he has experienced the the concept of me reflecting in my past and unable to sort of stop doing that is something that i would say drives my creativity and my creative endeavors whenever i sit down and i begin creating i i cannot help but reflect and and consider my past and my actions 
something that I understood that not a lot of people do. And as I was traveling and conversing with people, many many had the concept of the past is the past, so therefore we'll move forward. And few to none had the idea of even opening that door or entertaining to open that door for that matter, to even consider what happened before, uh, be it for an emotional sort of response or an idea that wanted to sort of die with the with the, the, the passing of time. As I understood that I, I just when I reflected on myself, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't stop introducing my past in my work and whenever I was sitting down, it, it just happened to for that that gate to open. Given that this time around in this theme I am not really having any distractions. I'm I'm not sort of distracted by people or chats or anything that uh, on on my previous theme in, in Flow on Twitch I was sort of very active and socially aware of what was happening around me and at the same time arting. This time around I'm I am faced with myself. I am faced with my thoughts when I sit down and, and I understood how much different it really is. I think it's my first time that I'm doing this for a big project and it's feeling really different from Flow, which uh, which socialization wo was at its core. Now that I'm sort of sitting down every day with my own mind, having to sort of navigate through all the junk and at the same time interesting conversations that I have with myself as I express myself it's nothing but fascinating a big problem that arises is a fixation urgency of me becoming completely fixated on what I'm doing and losing track of time uh, to the point that I, I, I dislike that about myself I dislike the, the concept of me being hyper fixated on something that shouldn't be that 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 strongly affecting affecting on me i have trouble explaining that as it's very new for me but for example the the the, the few weeks back when i had that issue with the face i started seeing myself becoming more fixated on on things that i feel like given the time that i have spent in this medium the concept of I know this, therefore I should see results is becoming sort of a demand in my mind. And when I when I don't see it, I become fixated and I become sort of attached to it. And it's something that I'm working on and I think it's workable and it's going to be alleviated, alleviated as I move forward in the story. But it's um, it's something that when I was painting in flowed I didn't have given that I was constantly accepting distractions and I was taking out of it I was taking out of that sort of emotional um, attachment that I had with what I was doing you know the the concept of like okay this is not looking great I need to sort of do it and that type of concept given that someone would sort of talk to me my mind will go in somewhere else a thing about something else that you know someone is sort of bringing up and, and now I don't have that. And although it's it's beneficial for me to really understand my own self, given that, I, that I'm able to sit down with it, but at the same time, it's it's something that that I begin to de to want to like change completely. And funnily enough, when I'm writing, as this this new theme has both, well, it's it's mixed media. I have drawings, I have poetry, writing, and etc. Whatever comes to, whenever it comes to writing and not really drawing, I don't really have that fixation. And I think I narrowed that down to me having the, the doors open to understand that I, am, I don't know enough of this medium to really be demanding of it. But because I'm, because in my illustration sort of side of things, I grew up with it. There is lots of instructions with it, and it becomes sort of like a demand of me to, to sort of create what I'm, what I sought out to do. 
if I were to explain the creativity and the emotional side of, of, of that medium when it comes to illustrations and drawings, um, the beginning part of it is always emotional. It's always sort of very creative. And the middle part that makes the design is super, super sort of methodical and it has instructions for me to follow until I reach that part and I go towards the end that again, emotions and creativity can blossom. Why I say that is that if I would dismiss the methodical and structural, is structural, is that, that's not a word? I guess so. Well, now it is. If I would dismiss that middle part, um, my, my, my efforts would create a result that won't be able to be comprehended by anyone except myself. The reason being is that the structural part of illustration and drawing when it comes to creating um, a composition and a, and a story and something that demands sort of um, perspectives and personalization to navigate. If I, if I was ob oblivious to the fact that I needed sort of a structure, I would have created something completely personalized that it sort of adds only from my vo vocabulary and nothing from the shared, shared world that we're all living. And I've observed that when I was sort of shifting from my very heavy student and, and, and teacher sort of years. And as soon as I got out of it, I sort of started doing the completely um, free type of thing. Lots of abstract work, uh, not in the context of visually abstract, but in the context of, of how it, it sort of comes across. And I would see people struggling to understand something that I was, I thought it was obvious. And through that, I guess, um, coming back to how writing doesn't have that effect of fixation and, and, and drawing does, is that in writing, I don't really have these rules. I wasn't, I wasn't brought up to have rules when I'm writing. It was a, it was a freeing act, but in drawing, I do. And I don't think that's particularly bad or it needs changing. But what I did understand on it was that I need to personally have positive distractions that when I'm fixating on something, I need to pause and do something else and come back to it. The reason being is that when fixation kicks in, in a design or any part of my, my, my work, it becomes it becomes detrimental on progress because rather than me finding solutions, I find problems. And with any question, having a perspective that seeks problems and not solutions is uh, a downward spiral of failure. And that's when it came as a result with the face of, of the previous design where it, uh, you know, an unfortunate circumstance made it unworkable and I was trying to make it work, but it wasn't workable. But the moment sort of that I, I slept on it, I sort of detached myself and said, this is enough. I've spent so many hours on it and I need to find a solution or perhaps scrap it and do something else in terms of the design and, yeah, and etc. I found the solution that um, really made sense as, a, as to move forward. And, and I wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for me to sit down with all this plethora of, of, of passion and, and complete fixation that I'm beginning to understand that I have. And it's, it's not a lie that, that every week that I work on this theme, I'm having sort of revelations or should I say mini revelations that given that I'm so, I spend so much time with my mind and, and my hands and expressing this very in, intriguing and, and, and personalized theme that is both felt around me and amongst many people, I, I begin to sort of become more aware of my actions and how that comes across. And I'm looking forward to, to see how that affects people and how that sort of is different from my previous theme as my previous theme was a lot more generalized, but this one has an actual character that has a history and people that he cared for, or they cared for him and actions and, and sequences that follow based on whatever he's feeling. And it's such a different scope 
of, of storytelling that I would never imagine doing or at least premeditate before it even began. So I'm really excited for this and I think it was appropriate to end the year of 2023 with this sort of foundational part of this theme and how it sort of came to be and my mindset around it. Uh, because in I think in this year that is to come, it's going to be um, a beautiful year for me to to explore more of my personal side on, on creating uh, artwork. And with it, the, the expression of of my vocal logs on what I understand from it and the constant change that is having uh, weekly on both of myself and, and sort of the challenges that I didn't think possible. And with it, I wish everyone to have um, a beautiful new year. Uh, I'm not one for wishes or celebrations or any of that. I'm terrible at that. It is true. But I, I, I sincerely hope everyone finds uh, the progress that they, they want or they want to f- focus on in this year and to be as informative as they want it to be. I think this is a, a beautiful moment for me to end the log. Thank you for spending um, 20 minutes of your new year with me. <laughs> Have yourself... Um, a beautiful day and let's see how this new year is going to affect um, affect us both <laughs>